Old photos suggest fire brought down the Titanic. An enormous and uncontrollable fire could be the main reason the Titanic sank on its disastrous maiden voyage more than a century ago. According to Irish journalist Sanam Maloney, 30-foot-long black marks seen on the hull of the Titanic before it left Belfast shipyard in 1912 are proof that a huge fire sunk the ship. The marks can be seen in old photos discovered by Maloney and point to a blaze in a coal room that would have reached temperatures of 1,000 degrees Celsius and warped the ship's steel bulkhead. Maloney says the marks appear on the exact area where the Titanic hit an iceberg on its way from Britain to New York before sinking to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Some 1,500 people died, making the sinking of the Titanic one of the worst disasters in maritime history. Maloney's theory was presented in a TV documentary shown in the UK earlier this week. He said the ship's owners were aware of the fire and even took the unusual step of reversing into the dock to hide the damage from passengers. Maloney said that even though the fire was known, the significance was downplayed and the Titanic should never have been put to sea. Here's five more stories about shipwrecks. At 882 feet long and with a gross weight of about 42,000 metric tons, the Titanic was the largest ship of her time. With 16 watertight compartments and a double hull, she was said to be virtually unsinkable. The Titanic was built in Belfast. She left Queenston on April 11, 1912, bound for New York. On April 14th, just before midnight, she hit an iceberg. Within three hours, she was at the bottom of the ocean. The Titanic hit the iceberg on her starboard side, damaging five watertight compartments. Six compartments in the bow flooded, causing the ship to tilt forward and sending water spilling over their bulkheads. The bow began to break off, causing the stern to lurch to an angle of 30 to 45 degrees. The bow disappeared slowly beneath the waves, but began to sink rapidly as it filled with water. The stern then filled with water and sank rapidly, picking up speed as it corkscrewed to the bottom of the ocean. The two sections came to rest about 2,000 feet apart. Florida treasure hunters find $4.5 million worth of gold coins. On July 30th and 31st, a fleet of treasure hunting boats discovered $4.5 million worth of sunken treasure. Brent Brisbane, owner of the fleet, said his crew recovered 350 gold coins, along with nine royals made especially for King Philip V of Spain. Spanish colonial coins were the main currency in North and South America between the 17th and 19th century. To facilitate easier transport from the New World to Spain, gold and silver were cut into roughly equal chunks and stamped with a pattern. Sometime in the 18th century, special coins called royals were made specifically for King Philip V of Spain, who reigned from 1700 until his death in the year 1746. The royals were different from regular gold coins. Royals were made by pouring molten gold into molds, which resulted in better circular symmetry. On July 24, 1715, 11 galleons carrying the royals along with troves of other treasures departed for Spain from Cuba. However, on July 31, 1715, the galleons were battered by a hurricane and sank in the area now known as Florida's Treasure Coast. The U.S. District Court of Florida will assess the gold recovered by the fleet from the Treasure Coast. 20% will be kept by the state and the remaining 80% will be divided amongst the crew. Crashed Volvo Ocean Race Team Rescued from Shark-Infested Seas the Mauritius Coast Guard have rescued a shipwreck team in the global Volvo Ocean race after the crew crashed into a remote coral reef in the Indian Ocean. The nine-month race started in October in Spain, with seven teams visiting six continents. The second stage takes competitors from Cape Town to Abu Dhabi. The Danish team ran aground on Saturday after smacking into a coral rock at 35 kilometers per hour. The Vestas wind spun 180 degrees before coming to a halt. The collision smashed both of the vessel's rudders and left the stern severely damaged. An onboard camera captured the moment Vesta's wind crashed in the shark-infested waters. All nine crew members were safe following the collision, but remained aboard for several hours after. They were forced to abandon ship after the stern began taking on water. Led by the Australian skipper, Chris Nicholson, the crew waded through knee-deep water to a dry section of the reef and waited for the Coast Guard to arrive. The crew were taken to a deserted island, Ile de Sud, on Tuesday, and then transported to Mauritius on Wednesday. The crew have retrieved their damaged $6 million yacht and hope to rejoin the next stage of the race in January after repairs are made. Cargo shipwreck spills tons of oil into sea. The TS Taipei, carrying 242 tons of heavy oil and toxic materials, 
has literally split in half off the coast of New Taipei City in Taiwan. The cargo ship was ran aground after its engine failed during a storm. Cracks appeared and the hull began to split on March 24th. The ship was completely compromised the following day. Eyewitnesses spotted layers of oil covering rocks on nearby shores shortly after. Three of the 617 containers aboard also have washed ashore. Nine of the remaining containers on the ship hold highly dangerous substances. Concerns also surround the nearby nuclear power plant, which uses seawater to cool its reactors. Officials are worried that the oil could be sucked into the cooling water. Cleanup crews are now working to contain and clean up the spill. If the spill isn't managed, the shipwreck could damage the ecosystem for two to three years. Body found in search for cargo ship sunk in Hurricane Joaquin. The U.S. Coast Guard said its crews found a body and an empty, heavily damaged lifeboat in their search for the cargo ship El Faro, believed to have sunk after it went missing off the Bahamas in Hurricane Joaquin. The cargo ship El Faro departed from Jacksonville, Florida on September 29th. The ship was en route to Puerto Rico with supplies when it lost communication on Thursday near the Crooked Islands in the Bahamas. According to officials, the ship lost propulsion, was taking in water, and was listing at 15 degrees. On Sunday, the Coast Guard spotted two large debris fields containing items identified as coming from El Faro, including cargo doors, styrofoam, and 55-gallon drums. Crews were unable to identify a body found wearing a survival suit on Sunday. The Coast Guard also reported finding life rafts and a heavily damaged lifeboat. Rescuers are no longer looking for the ship, but are continuing the search for survivors, the Coast Guard said in a press conference on Monday. See a story that really should be animated? Suggest stories to Tomo News Now.